Hi there, in this video we're going to talk briefly about hypothesis testing and what it means in the sort of world of econometrics. Okay, so I always think about things in econometrics as we have some sort of population and, and we don't have the entire population's data, we in fact just have a sample from that population. So yeah, we've sort of picked a sort of whole, a random sample from the population and we're using some sort of tools on that sample to make some sort of inference about what's going on in the population. So one example um, when we sort of try to make inferences about a population might be, let's say we were trying to estimate what the population sort of mean height was. And because we don't have the entirety of the population data, we only have a sample from that then perhaps what we do to that sample is we would calculate the mean sort of height in that sample and perhaps we found it was equal to let's say five foot seven inches. Okay, so that, that's what we found as our sort of sample mean. And what we're trying to do with this sample mean is we're trying to make some estimate or some sort of um, inference about what's going on in the population. Uh, specifically, we're trying to sort of gauge what the actual true population mean height is. So in the sort of world of hypothesis testing, our sort of null hypothesis, it might be that um, we have sort of reason to believe that the mean height in the population is somewhere around five foot um, four, let's say, for example. And, and so that's our sort of null hypothesis. That's a null hypothesis here means that this is our sort of hypothesis that we're going to go to if we can't find any information to reject that null hypothesis. That's, that's just our, our sort of default option. And in this circumstance, we might be interested in testing as to whether um, the actual true population mean was in fact greater than five foot four. Yeah, because we found a value that was five foot seven, we might be interested in finding out whether it is actually the case that our mean population height is greater than five foot four. Well, how do we go about doing this? Well, the central limit theorem is a theorem which says that if we have sort of any random variable and we average over them, then it turns out that the sample mean of those random variables is normally distributed. This is sort of in the asymptotic limit about the true population parameter, which we're going to call mu. So if I was to draw a sort of frequency distribution of, if I took sort of repeated samples from my population and for each of those samples I calculated um, X bar, then if I had loads and loads of samples, the central limit theorem tells me that my um, frequency distribution should be um, normally distributed around the true value mu. Okay, so how can we use this to test whether the null hypothesis is true, essentially? Well, we need to think about um, how likely it would be that we would reject the null hypothesis, given that it was true. And that's this sort of region here. Let's sort of think about this sort of tail here, in the case of a one-tailed test. And um, we know that because um, this is a PDF, that if I sort of integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, the sort of PDF, and um, the normal PDF here with respect to x, then it has to add up to one. So we can sort of think about this fat tail here is representing the probability that we would have got a value of sort of height or average height um, that was sort of in this sort of range here, given that it was actually the case that we had a sort of true population of mu. And in order to sort of select whether we um, accept our null hypothesis or not, we actually form some sort of arbitrary cutoff here. We say that if the probability that um, we, would re we would actually reject the null, um, given that it is true, is um, less than or equal to 0 0.05, so it's less than 5%, then we actually reject the null hypothesis. Because the intuition here is that if and we get a value of x which is sort of over in this sort of tail over here, then it's very likely that it's actually not the case that we have a population um, which is sort of has a population mean of mu. It's probably more likely that we have a population which has some sort of value of mu which is greater than that, so sort of mu primed in this sort of notation here. So that's the idea with hypothesis testing. So we have to find, first of all, the value of x which represents this cutoff, given our sort of uh, null hypothesis being true. 
And let's say in this circumstance, we found that the sort of cutoff was something like five foot eight. So we looked up in sort of a normal distribution table and we found out for this sort of um, mean and for this variance of our population, then it was actually cut off of five foot eight. Well then, on the basis of our um, sample mean, the fact that we had a value of five foot seven, we would actually not reject the null hypothesis because five foot seven would be somewhere like this. So it wouldn't lie in this sort of 5% range here and we would not reject the null hypothesis in this circumstance. Um, the sort of idea here is that the probability that we would reject the null hypothesis, given that it was true, and sort of given that we also found a value of x bar equal to 5 foot 7, um, would be something which is greater than 0 0.05. So it's sort of greater than a 1 in 20 chance or, um, that we would have got this value of x bar, given that our null hypothesis was true. So under those circumstances, we would, ex well, we wouldn't reject the null hypothesis. We don't ever say we accept the null hypothesis, we just say we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so that's what would happen if we found that our value of um, the population, or, or sorry, the sample mean was actually sort of to the left of this 5 foot 8. And if it was actually the case that we found our um, sample mean being equal to 5 foot 9, then in this circumstance, the prob probability of rejecting the null hypothesis, given that it was true, would be um, less than 0 0.05. So we would say that that's really unlikely that that null hypothesis is actually true. So we would actually reject the null hypothesis, and we would um, we wouldn't reject we wouldn't accept the alternative, but we would reject the null hypothesis. So that's the idea behind hypothesis test testing at a sort of a very high level. And um, in future videos, we're going to talk about this in a little bit more depth.